Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Video bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Audio bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full length CD listening parties. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest writer Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1411, recorded April 9th, 2013. Talk to the hand. And now, get ready for Dick. What? Oh, good morning. It's time for Dick is Wiz. <laughs> It didn't play. It's not playing, but it's, it's the fun. same moon show with Dickie D and Leo Laporte on Twit TV. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Gizwiz? We don't need no stinking Gizwiz. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gizwiz Show. Time for the Thrill Cast. Oh. oh. What? Oh. No. What happened? It's not thrilling. It's it's hard to see right here, but the, you see the little track there. There's little white flags on it. I think those are they're waving their white flags of surrender because it's not working right now. We give up. There's no business. Oh, Dick, oh. I'm so sorry. We failed you once again. Oh. But I'm telling oh. you, this is going to be a show to stay tuned for because, ladies and gentlemen, We've received a few things from Sky Mall today. Uh 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 uh. uh. Not gonna say any more, but stay tuned. Whoa. Stay tuned. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited. I, don't know, I feel like I should wear this hat right here. I don't know why. I just yeah. Yeah. This if you were half the man I thought you were, you wouldn't have to hold it. <laughs> How are you, Dick? I hear it's hot well, as I'm heck in Manhattan. It is 80, 80 degrees. What the heck? I know. 60 to 80. No stopping at 70 <laughs> or 75. You right skipped, up to 80. You skipped spring and you went right to summer. Oh, did we ever? Yeah. We're going to do the same thing here, but we did have a little bit of a, a spring in between. But uh, it's going to be 84, I think they said, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, we're having a, I don't know about you, but we're having a high-pressure zone moving in. Oh, no. Myra's leaving in a little while. <laughs> Dick, I heard there'd be snacks. Where are the snacks? <laughs> yeah, that was her. That was her. That was her. And you know, Leo, since uh, the last Gizwiz and this Gizwiz, I visited. <gasps> That's that Mr. Is that Mr. Dandy's handy? <laughs> That's Mr. Robert Osborne's. Oh, bobblehead. He's got a good bobblehead. That's at the Turner <laughs> Classic Movies. You now we should uh, tell people if you don't watch the Giz Fizz, which he does every Saturday after the Tech Guy, you had a couple people on from TBS and TCM. Yes, and I see a and, TCM uh, something behind you, mug or something. Oh boy, you are you, you have unbelievable eyes. Yeah, yeah. A, a TCM mug, and I got the bobblehead, and so you were on a, with Robert Osborne. With Robert Osborne, it almost took four years because co-hosts they only tape them once or twice a year. They do the whole year at one time or six months at one time. Wow. And uh, it finally came around, and uh, Sean Cameron had said, you know, we want you to co-host a night of movie satires. Oh, perfect. Yeah, because he said, as Mad's Maddest Writer, you would be ideal. Yeah. Uh, and then it took problems with, I didn't realize, you know, they had owned, like, all the old Warner movies and stuff, but a lot of clearances and things to be done for other movies. So it, it took a very long time, but I finally got to do it. But the funny thing was my producer, Courtney O'Brien, when the first call, she said, you know, I'm a big Twit fan, and I listen to the Giz Wiz, wow. and my boyfriend introduced me to Leo and, and uh, the tech guy. And she said, so in your interview with Robert, during one of the segments, I'll have him ask you about, about gadgets, and you can mention Twit and Twit.tv. So it was great. I got to do all my favorite things, a lifelong dream 
to be on Turner Classic Movies, get to bring in gadgets and twit.tv. And um, they take very far in advance, so it's going to run <clears throat> in October. I used to read Robert Osborne regularly in, uh, I think it was The Hollywood Reporter, right? Yes. For years. And then yes. I started seeing him on the movie channel and now on Turner Classic Movies, and he's a great movie host. What I didn't know is he's 80 years old. Yes. But he looks and great. He looks great. And, and that's one of the reasons it became easier now for my spot to come up, because he had to fly every month to do the regular oh. wraparounds. Wow. And he flew to Atlanta every month, sometimes twice a month, for 19 years. Oh, my goodness. I know. So now they just moved the studio to New York City, and we taped at uh, HBO Studios. Um, so now he just go, he goes about 20 blocks to uh, do his spots. So he lives in the, in the city? Yes, he lives in Manhattan. That's great. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I just, I, so when will that be on? Uh, it's going to be on in October, and when they get a little bit closer in, they'll give me the, the actual air date. It'll be uh, four movies in one night, four movie satires in one program. And what uh, can you tell us what the movies are? Is oh, yeah. Um, I picked uh, Murder by Death. <laughs> which That's an Agatha was, Christie parody. Uh, yeah, by Neil Simon. Yeah. Um, I wanted to have something from Woody Allen, and one of his most out-and-out -out satires, Love and Death. Oh, yeah, it's a Bergman satire. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. It's a combination of Ingmar Bergman and Edgar Bergen. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it has every kind of stick. But death, and death appears in it. He's like with a scythe and everything. Did they play chess or something? I can't remember. Yes, they play chess. He, there's Marx Brothers in it. There's the Three Stooges. He ends up hiding in a cat in a cannon and gets fired out of a oh, cannon. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a, oh, that's right. Love and Death is both Bergman and Tolstoy. Yes, yes. Together and and a lot and and probably his most famous line is from that movie. Um, sex without love is an empty experience, but as empty experiences go, it's one of the best. <laughs> That's Woody. That, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. Woody. Oh, how uh, fun. So there's two. What else did you do? Uh, this is Spinal Tap. Oh, yeah. The greatest, the greatest docu mockumentary yes, of yes. all time. A Mock rockumentary. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. And the funniest, and, and it wasn't until I saw it years ago when Robert Osborne said, pay attention to the credits because they, they are ad kind of ad-libbing under the credits. And there is such funny stuff. You know, what do you want on your, to on your tombstone? Here lies Sir Alfred Higgins, and why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, yeah. Some, Somebody some, once mm -hmm. told me that the, uh, the Spinal Tap is like the Three Stooges. It's pretty much guys that like it. Oh, that could be. I don't know why that is. It's a guy, it's a guy humor. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of women who like it, but it seems like it's, it's, there's something about it's guy humor. It could be. It yeah. could be. And, and you know, it's it. and it's Christopher Guest and Rob Reiner, oh, and gosh. and you know, uh, uh, I read that like sixty percent of it is just ad lib. They they just mm -hmm. oh, you believe that? I used to have the with, with, with where they they start out with where the scene has to end up and what they have to. Uh, get over right. to the audience within the scene and then go do Make it. it up. Yeah, I used to have the laser disc actually, the Criterion oh, the laser really? disc years and years and years ago. Wow. And they had a lot of those outtakes where they're just kind of oh, riffing and that. everything. It's great. So yeah. it might be worth getting, well, you got to watch it uh, with the commentary by uh, yeah. Dick and Robert uh, commentary is on awesome. TCM. Yeah. And the final uh, one was called This Is Your Local, uh, uh, Support Your Local Sheriff. Oh, yeah. Well, James Garner, which has some very very funny situations in it you know a thug locked in jail but they didn't have the the bars haven't come for the jail yet <laughs> so but a, somehow james gonna psychologically <laughs> keeps them there <laughs> and there's nothing funny than a man standing in front of a cell with no bar saying there's no jail built that can hold me <laughs> But that he's in there. It's, it's a riot. It's very hey, what, funny. Do, I bet there were a few movies for time or because of the, were the rights you couldn't uh, include. What, yes, exactly. Give me a few one of, of those. Them, one of them was Airplane. The, the rights oh, yeah. hadn't, come up, hadn't come up fast enough. Greatest, uh, greatest Airplane. Because people, uh, probably uh, young people wouldn't remember, but there was a whole spate of disaster movies. This yes, side absolutely. adventure, which you mocked absolutely. and mad. A top secret. Yeah. 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 And a lot, there was like Airport 1, 2, 3, and 4, something like that, right? Yeah, the serious ones. Yeah.
Yeah, so yes, Airplane yeah. was a very, with Leslie Nielsen, it was his greatest movie, I think. Very funny. Uh, pretty. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, that's the I one did. where he says, please don't call me Shirley. Mm -hmm. People yes. quote that movie more probably than any movie of all time. No, absolutely. Absolutely. What's the vector, Victor? You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many right, funny right. moments in that. Right. And when the photographers come in, <clears throat> the uh, station manager says, uh, the, the photographer says, is it okay to take some pictures? And the guy said, yeah, take pictures. And they run around, they take all the pictures <laughs> off the, the wall, and, and they leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one where he says, I picked, a, it's, I picked a bad time to give up smoking, and then it keeps, keeps on going from there. There are a lot of repeating jokes in that. The running the, jokes are great. The yes. people lined up to slap the hysterical passenger. Oh, yes, yes, on the airplane. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's a great movie. Now I want to watch it again. What else? What else couldn't you get? Uh, let's see. What, <clears throat> I, I wanted Airplane or Top Gun. Top Gun. And, you know, I, I didn't. I decided not to pick a Mark Brothers thing. Not Top Gun. Thing. Top Only Gun was the real oh, no, movie. Top Secret. Top, top, top Secret. Top Secret. Okay. Top Secret. Um, and I decided not to do the Marx Brothers since a lot of channels show them quite often. Well I think known. It, yeah. With, yeah, uh, well known. Naked but Gun. The, uh, Naked the, Gun. These were very... Uh, satirical movies that, uh, like Murder by Death, is is almost like a mad parody where right. uh, Miss Mopples is Miss Marbles, right. and you know, yeah. No, those are that's you made. I can't wait to watch that. So you don't know the exact date yet. No, they will tell me but probably tell us. two or three months before. Very good. Hey, I wanted to show you something. You had the 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 what was it called? The Brawley, the umbrella. That yes, has the, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I I ordered something for my iPhone I thought you might like. This is the an iPhone uh, case with brass knuckles uh, built in. So you never, uh, you, can all, you can text with this too without dropping oh. it. Yeah. Same idea. Uh -huh. And if anybody uh, costs you, you just wham! Bam! Wow. That is yeah. good. Yeah. The iPhone. That's and that was good. only five bucks. iPhone wow. case built in with brass knuckles. Have you gone through uh, security with it? <laughs> no, that's a good idea. I'll try that <laughs> on my next trip. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I won't have I, to go. I don't think I don't think that would be. It's if decorative. I carried it like this, yeah, what? Yeah. yeah, what? What's the problem, officer? That wouldn't hurt. I wouldn't get in trouble. No, that, that, <clears throat> that's not good. No. That's not good. <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. Uh, all right, we got some gadgets. Let's, we do. Let's, let's get to the gadget, oh, Sticky D. Leo, the first, okay, so the first gadget I thought was a joke uh, from Think Geek because, you know, this past week was April Fool's they Day. They do the best April Fool's jokes. Yeah, and uh, on their website they have, let me just turn around and get it, they have the handset glove that is, you know, the, the universal signal for when someone is a little bit out of earshot but you want to talk to them later on in the day. You know, you put your thumb in your ear, you put your pinky by your mouth, and yeah. then you... you know, call you, me, the, yes, call exactly. me, call exactly. me, call me, call me. And you go, and you go... Yes, you, exactly. You, you, uh, you mouth it. Yeah. You mouth, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so I was talking to the guys there, and they said, it's not a joke, it, it's a real thing. We'll send you one. Try Wait it. a minute. No, but that's a glove. So they sent you a glove for doing that with? Yeah. Leo, this is a Bluetooth enabled. A Bluetooth you know, do you still glove. have you still have my uh, cell phone number? <laughs> uh, yeah, should I call you? Yeah, call me. I'll uh, call me when it rings. I'll shut my mic and we'll hear what it sounds like. Um, well, wait a minute. Now, in order to do that, I could use Skype on this machine. Should I do that, uh, Jason? What do you What do you yeah, think the could. best way? Um, I mean, I'd get your audio that way. Either that or you could plug the audio uh, yeah. jack well, you, You're into getting the, my audio now, are you? I should, yeah. You could tell we've really planned this ahead of time. <laughs> yes, yes, I like exactly. it on the fly. Yeah, we just make it up as we're going along. That's the whole show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let me. Absolutely. So this, here's the number. I'm just going to... That's how we is, roll. You know, in reality, what is wonderful about this show is that it does look like we really, really did not plan anything. Despite and, and the I years of rehearsal. I mean, we're famous. To, to our credit. Yeah. That Jason is unbelievable. Yeah. I was in at 8 this morning. Oh, I know. He, he's a taskmaster, yeah. isn't he? Oh, he's a dick. It doesn't... Oh. It sounds he's rehearsed. A what? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's a... Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm going to call... Uh -huh. Boy, you know, I don't know how you got the number one 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 one. That's yeah, that's pretty the good. One, one. That's, the that's one, easy, one, to, one. easy to dial. I just kept typing that. All right, so we're, now answer your uh, your your glove. I have to wait till my till my glove rings. <laughs> uh -huh. We got the right number. 
Hey, Leo, you there? Yeah. 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 Okay, let me just, uh, I'll set my mic. <laughs> I already did. Okay. That's, that's a, so you're on, you're on your glove right now. Is that it? You're I'm on your... talking on my glove. I'm going to take my, head, my uh, earpiece off. Now, I think some of the reason this doesn't sound great is because it's on a cell phone. It's burbly a little bit. But the, but uh, we can't tell because it's a glove. <laughs> it's, <laughs> kind of, it's kind of funny. You know, it's, if it was the original seventy dollars price, I wouldn't have been so impressed. But I don't know if it's an introductory offer or not. But it's thirty-five bucks. Thirty-five bucks, and it does look like you're talking into a glove. That's the amazing thing. That's the funny thing, and uh, I'm going to take it away from my ear. The uh, the controls are here. Wait a minute, it sounds better I when know. it's... Um, Dick, I got to tell you, you can't hear me, but it sounds better when your glove is, is far away. Are you sure it sounds better? Yeah. <laughs> now, it's, oh. now it's gone. All right. But, I, you know, this would be good for, this would be good for skiers. Because you could, uh, you could... Dick, I don't know, we lost the call, lost it. I'm going to hang up on you now. But that's pretty impressive. Now, I was also using Google Voice, so right. we don't know where the bird was. There were a few points been, of abstraction been, there, yeah. Could have been the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was the glove. But there's a, a demo on the Think Geek site of a guy using the glove, and it sounds really, uh, you know, like any Bluetooth headset. Yeah, there you go. Wow, yeah, that's they, uh, wild, Dick. Oh, it went up in price. Oh, it was 35 bucks. Oh. now 60 bucks. Oh, okay. So a little less, a little less so wonderful. They, ch they changed it in the past 20 24 hours. Yeah. So that All would right. be good for skiers. So there's a guy is outside and he's talking. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. This is Chris. Do the Bluetooth handset gloves work? They look great. Awesome. Thanks. Well, that was a great demo. So there. But at least when you say talk to the hand, you can. Literally, you can, you can, and and you do you do get the matching glove, so it is a pair of gloves. Oh, it's two for the price yeah. of two, two, two for the price of two. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's right. good. And, and the fabric is, you know, you can with both gloves on, you can use the touch. Screen. Oh, it's that silver stuff where the uh, yeah, it's conductive, conductive fiber. Yeah, okay, yep, cool. Yeah, conductive fiber. Yeah, cool. all right. Okay, and it charges via micro USB. Well, a little more compelling if you had, if you knew about this uh, when we talked about it on the radio show on Saturday, you could have picked it up for thirty-five bucks, but they've yeah. gone up to sixty. Yeah, my my guess is that so many people picked it up it's because of thirty-five dollars. It's probably yes. us. That, that is exactly what I think. Nice Monday job, morning, Dick. they got in and said, "Whoa, what? wait a minute! It's a wait. it's a bestseller! Quick, raise the rent." Gadget number two, Mr. D. Gadget number two is a Gizwiz video uh, updating a gadget we uh, talked about a year or two ago. So uh, let's uh, run to Gizwiz video of the week. The Key Bartolo Management has tried to end the Gizwiz with another Gizwiz one take theater video. Okay, a couple of years ago, not a couple of years ago. Mm, Maybe last year. Could have been the year before. Can't quite remember. I talked about the rocket, okay? This was the rocket, or it is the rocket. And uh, let me just see here. It's from Bed Bath & Beyond, or I bought it at Bed Bath & Beyond, and it was $19.99. So I paid $20 for that. And if you don't remember this, you play music and... Sounds awful that way. But then you would take the little end cap... Put the end cap on any sort of a box, even a box it came in. Sounds better on the bigger box. And you get music, okay? So that's the Rocket 2.0. Then they came out with the Rocket 3.0. The difference was the Rocket 2.0 takes two AA batteries. The 3.0 has a built-in rechargeable battery. But now, now they have come out with the amazing... Epishock. Oh, okay. It's the yeah. same company, Origodio. And they say that the playing surface of the Epishock is 10 times. That's like more than five times. I can't believe I, I just bought a rocket. The playing and now surface they're... of the original. Are you serious? Did you really? Well, Chad did. So let me plug oh. it in here. And. Oh, did he buy this one or the, or the old one? He bought the old one, so I want the epicenter. What do you call it? Epicenter? Uh, Epishock. Epishock. So you can still play this on a box. 
But I like it better when you play it on a really heavy duty surface. Like I'm gonna put it down on the main part of the desk and play just a little bit more. Okay, this is what it sounds like in the air. Now on the surface. That's pretty nifty. And now don't forget, I'm using a little mic. This thing is nowhere near the mic, so. Oh, come on, damn, we love your music, but stop. Um, oh, pricing. All right, so the Rocket 2.0 is still on Amazon, and it's all over the lot, anywhere from about 15 to 18 bucks. And the Epishock list price is 50 bucks. It's on Amazon for a little bit under 30 bucks. And all of them are under Amazon Prime, so that would be free shipping. Also, this guy would probably sound even a touch better. It comes with a little pad. This one has a sticky pad on it that you slam onto the surface so it sticks to the surface. Uh, because I wanted to move it around, I left a little plastic pad on it. But by holding it down, you still get the effect of the Epishock. Dick T. Bartolo, Mads Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz with another Gizwiz video here on Twit. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Not a phone. No. <laughs> oh! Whoa! Whoa! You're oh, yeah. What is that? It makes no sound, and oh, then that's... it's because this is. I guess Anthony, our editor, bought one of these. Oh! But this is the old one. Yeah, it's a fake two or three on the side. Wow, that is that makes a big difference. Yeah. And so basically, so you, you know what? This is just a driver for a speaker, and then, you, yeah. but without a cone, and basically the box becomes the cone. Yeah. Is that yeah. a 2.0 or a 3.0? I don't. Oh, it should say right on. It should say Rocket 2.0. It says Rocket. Oh, that's all. Okay. That means it's really old. <laughs> Anthony must have got this at the at the some fair. Oh, the dollar store. The dollar. It was a dollar. Anyway, but no, when you heard how loud that is. Yes. Jiminy. And this one is 10 times more powerful. Yow. Yeah. Shout at the devil. <laughs> wow. The Epishock. And, uh, and uh, Raygun01, who is Jason Howell, our producer, says it's the only show on the entire network where we get to really use the TriCaster as it was designed. <laughs> with all the cheesy effects. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were, exactly. I was talking to Lisa this morning, and she said, we really got to get the, the new TriCaster, the 8500. I said, why? We don't. We hardly <laughs> use these things. If you're watching the video, whoa, wh why whoa, do we whoa, need that? Do we really whoa, need that? We don't even use whoa. this stuff. Oh. 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 I feel I know, like I'm, I'm in sick. Superman 3 oh, and trapped whoa. in the space-time oh. continuum. <laughs> but the amazing thing is it, it, it moves my studio, too. <laughs> no, the 8500 would move your studio. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. the new, well, the then new I'll, one. I'll, I'll, I'll chip in. Yeah, I'll, I'll chip. yeah. No, I, you know, I, I thought, well, I don't know, Jason, what do you think? Do we don't, we, we hardly, we use one-tenth of what this thing is capable of. It's true, but it could be capable of so, so much, much more. more. We could use <laughs> one one-hundredth. <laughs> that's exactly. So, so there. I'm all so for there. options, Leo. So that's the Epishock, the su successor Epishock? to the Bioshock. Yeah, that's true. We need it for TNT. Yep. <laughs> yeah. TNT used it. Yeah. We need it for yeah. TNT. There you go. Just, uh, just to make sure it's in the hole even more. Exactly. <laughs> Let's buy uh, a $50,000 switcher just to keep it in the negative. Now, Dick, gadget number three. Gadget number three? Then we're going to do something okay. special. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Oh, All right, so yeah. We're, we're going real cheapy here. A couple weeks ago, we did the outdoor solid-powered security light. I think it was like 150 bucks from Maxa. Well, they have another little, uh, not, not a security light, but uh, motion-activated night light or, or uh, a, a way to stick this in a closet. What a great idea for this little thing. I'll just hold it up. Actually, Jason can cut to it on my There it is. Yeah, camera. there it is. Yeah. Uh, so it has three little LEDs. It's not going to go on now because it also has... Um, a little window <laughs> down here. You that have so many night lights in your house. I'm I'm amazed you can sleep. It's like an I airport landing strip in your house. <laughs> you know what, Leah? My studio does look like a landing. I bet. Strip. 
It truly does. As a matter of fact, I have one of these little Maxa mini LED motion lights right by the front door. Oh, and it illuminates idea. a little sign that says, welcome, you are on seven video cameras. <laughs> so enjoy. My, my theory is that if someone breaks in and that light goes on, all they have to do is look over at my monitors, and there are so many flashing LED oh, lights, and blue. they're going to say, "This guy's not kidding." Let's just back out of here before uh, within camera range. Uh, but this little guy has a lot of uh, great advantages. Put it in a closet. Put it in, <clears throat> near the fuse box. So as you walk to the fuse box, it'll come on. Uh, this is but great. The I want a dozen of them. Yeah, well, Leo, on on Amazon, I saw a great idea. Put it under the bed, oh, so yeah. in the middle of the night, when your legs hit the floor, the motion sensor will see it and turn on. So as as long as there's motion, the light stays on. Once the motion stops, it shuts off after thirty seconds, so it can illuminate steps. But the neat thing is, uh, list price is fifteen bucks, and on Amazon, it's eight bucks. And also, it's Amazon Prime. So if you're an Amazon Prime customer, free shipping. Uh, These Runs are the same on. guys who made the, the car laser that you did. Yes, they did. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, runs on three AA batteries that you supply, but, and it comes in white, and something they call bronze. Uh, I have a white one, but I think the bronze could easily pass Look, for Look, she's got it on every step, and it lights up as she walks up the steps. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, how, do they say how long this lasts in a battery? You know what? My guess is it's going to be a fairly long time because it's... LED. It's, yeah, yeah, it's LEDs, and after the motion stops, it shuts off after 30 seconds. Also, it doesn't come on if the light sensor sees light, so I think you're going to get a fair amount of life out of three uh, double A's. Put it in your closet. Yeah. Put it on the stairs, put it under the bed. I like the uh, the example they use of putting it above the circuit breaker. Put it, it yeah, because if, if you're going power. under the circuit breaker, it's because mm -hmm. the power's out. Mm -hmm. Put it right yeah. there. I'm getting a few of them. That's great. <laughs> that is a great Maxa idea. Mini LED motion activated night light. They make a ton of uh, that kind of stuff. They're they like the do. kings of motion activated things. They are. They are. And yeah. as a matter of fact, they said, you know, are you coming out to the hardware show in May? And I said, yes. And they said, we'll show you more new stuff. <laughs> so they have a solar activated flag light. So your flag is never gets uh, dark. Oh, that's a riot. They that's have, riot. Uh, and in case you didn't want the 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 park right light, they got a park right ball. For you, <laughs> you don't have to buy a tennis ball. They'll just sell no, you the ball. No, because that one lights up. Oh, it does. That ah, one has LED, see, so when it's your even better. It, you get the dancing. Uh, this is amazing. Motion LED. activated dual hell LED head LED security floodlight. I think you've talked about that before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So what's the name of this? Because they've got 20 pages of things. Okay, this is this is the Max Mini Mini LED motion activated night light. Mini. But the, yeah, the links are all LED. on my website. Oh, to you the, know, if you go to, to gizwiz.biz, what am I saying? Yeah. Go to giz. There it is. Go to gizwiz.biz. That's the place. That's the place. That's the place. Hey, you want You you got Myra Joyce in there. Yes. She's got snacks. You want to meet somebody from our chat room that you probably know? Oh yeah, Curtis B is. Come here, Curtis. Oh, Curtis B is visiting. He was he was a uh, chat room celebrity of the week. He's from he's from Saskatoon. Uh, yeah. Wow! And he brought me berries. Wow! Chocolate so, Curtis, covered. Say hello to Myra. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can make something happen here. <laughs> nice. To, no, no, don't worry. Nice. Have a long distance relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice to nice to see you, Curtis. Thanks for stopping by and bringing some wow. fruit and vegetables and uh, saying hi to. He wanted to say hi because he's a fan. Yeah, now yeah. he heard about the Sky Mall. He knew oh. what's coming up. Yeah, okay, exactly. sit down because yeah, this is going to get yeah. good. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah, we're are you ready? Get at the camera. Are I'm you, ready. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Hit the jingle. So this is not one but two... Things we bought at Sky Mall. Um, You're going to do two at once? No. Well, first bring on... Uh, Bert, could you bring me... How do I? How do we do this? This is the uh, soft serve ice cream, pink ice cream machine. Bert's going to bring this in here. Pink ice cream? 
Yeah, pink ice cream machine. Oh, Here's the, it's from Cuisine Art, so this is not just some oh, crappy. That's good. It's the Save the Tatas version. It's this, but it's a special one. The reason it's pink is it's a Save the Tatas version. It's the okay. breast cancer awareness oh, oh, okay, ice okay, cream machine. Okay. I don't know what they're what those two have together. Now, uh, it's it's it. What you do is you're gonna you're gonna get a blender. He's gonna bring it out to me here. Okay. Oh, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna the get. Whole a, they, we got thing. recipes in here for uh, for the for you don't get a blender. You but Look you need at this a blender. Overhead camera, just like look at the that. Food? Just for this, oh. this is like a cooking show. And wow. uh, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a blender. You're gonna say uh, we're gonna make strawberry ice cream today. Okay. So good. you need eight ounces of very red, ripe strawberries. There we go. This is from the strawberry farms in Petaluma. You need a two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. A tea oh, quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. We got that right there. Two-thirds cup whole milk. And then uh, one and one-thirds cup heavy cream. That's what makes this ice cream. Wow. That's the whipping cream. All right? So we got all the ingredients. We put it in the blender. Uh, in this case, because we don't have a blender base, we won't because I could be no point in that. And then what do you put it in a bowl and you freeze it? Because you don't, it doesn't, there's a, bowl that's freezing. There's a special bowl that makes, but but you put that in the bowl in the mixer, so the bowl has to freeze ahead of time. So what we, 12 hours ahead of time, and then that bowl goes in here, right? And then you put the lid on it with a stirrer, and that goes on top of that, and then you press the, you press the button and something happens. It stirs the bowl. There's an on button over here. I had people who to learned how to do this. No, that's for the, that's for the treats. Oh, that's yeah. to do toppings. Oh, we got toppings and everything in here. That's got that's part oh, of the feature wow. of this. So uh, I can't I can't really see it, but I'm just gonna press whatever happens, whatever is over here. Down, be, down, down. Oh, left. my lights just went out. Hit the other button. <laughs> left, right. All right. However, so here's the bowl. I'll just show you the bowl. Actually, I I've had this. I had this thing. It's in my garage. This, in fact, I think we did this on the Gizwiz years ago. We so this, did. Yeah. This freezes. Yeah. Yes. This freezes. You did this, and I bought it. Well, yes, now I bought it twice. <laughs> I only used it once the first time, but I have no memory, apparently. And so I had to go out and buy it again. So you're telling me now. Now I have to get this off. Let's get this right off here. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to take this off. We're going to put the bowl in here, right, just like that. And then we put the ingredients into here. Close your eyes, Dick. And then we okay. put the <laughs> we put the ingredients in, like so. Why did okay. I suspect this could happen? <laughs> put the ingredients in. Don't don't. Yeah, it's really good. Put the ingredients in. Okay. We don't want to shatter the uh, don't want to the illusion. Do it. Do it, do it no, carefully. No. There we go. Do it carefully. There you go. Okay. Wow. Perfect. There we go. And now I'm gonna <laughs> stay on target. Now, how wow. long uh, how long after you put the ingredients in do you have to mix this? It sounds like it's going to be an hour before you be able to push that down into it. <laughs> Thank you. Why is this? How come the button's oh, on a different side there. now? Oh, there's two buttons. It's, ah. it's like it starts making the ice cream before it even begins. It's amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. All right. Wow. Boy, if this really ice cream uh, <laughs> weren't so frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the bowl. The, the I mean, bowl. The bowl, I doubt the bowl it. is I doubt so it cold. Feet is gonna turn. No, it's just right. Uh, okay. Why don't you do the honors, Burke? Since you made the ice cream, <laughs> just flip the switch. <laughs> it's, it's too cold. Wait, let me take some out. No, no, it's okay. I just it. pretend it's going. Mm. It's, it's it's not turning, so it's too it's too cold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear it mixing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it's all mixed I, I, up. I see through the clear window. <laughs> it looks like professional grade <laughs> strawberry ice cream already. <laughs> oh, it's better than professional grade because there's no extra <laughs> fake stuff <laughs> in it. Is it just, printing the ice cream? Yeah, because it's it printing like it out. <laughs> uh, just, just the really good stuff in here. Now, I said wow. there'd be two uh, gadgets on here. Yeah. To serve this up, oh, okay. I could do it. 
Burke could do it, but really, I think we need a professional, a trained professional. And okay. you remember one of the other items we found on Sky Mall was the captain's... <laughs> Whoa. The, ca <laughs> <laughs> the captain's uh, Star Trek dress for $350. Right. So uh, we've got, ladies and gentlemen, Liz R, Lizard77 from our chat room. She's going to come out here, and she's going to serve us soft serve ice cream in the Uhuru uh, dress. Wow. It's Let's the captain's see that. dress. So she's Captain Janeway. Oh, boy. Whoa. Hama, hama. Wow. wow. She's also... Uh, 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 very tall. Very tall. <laughs> I okay. look up to her. Very <laughs> nice. See. Look at this now. Do you like this dress? Is it nice? It's a little warm because it's like made of some sort of... Let me just... It's like... Yeah. Um, it's, it's authentic, uh, though. Alex said that this is exactly... This, is, color this is authentic. and Now, it's the worst puke green I've ever seen. And uh, but that's the authentic. Alex yeah, no, says it's authentic. Says is yeah, the Alex. Color. Alex, Alex verified it because he's a star Star Trekker. Even tried it on, made sure that it felt right. Yeah, I he saw knows. Alex wearing it. Um, it doesn't fit him quite as well as you. He looks no. like that's ensign gumple to you <laughs> <laughs> of the Star. This is what he wanted when, when star, to make uh, Microsoft change things. The star, the starship. I'm a little chafed. Um, Anyway, so it looks better, I think, on Liz. You want just do a little spin for us on the. Yeah. She, it's very short. Uh, it's not been around really, short really, people. really fast. She looks good in it. She looks very. Yeah. yeah. Very good in it. Much better than Alex did. So, <clears throat> ice cream cone. Would you do the honors, uh, Lieutenant or Captain, whatever the hell, Romero? So take an ice cream cone and now pull the lever. Pull the lever down right here. Just this. That's the that's the lever. And it's going to shoot right out. <laughs> it's not <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe it's melted a little more. Let's let's turn it on now. You know what? I think this is there I a switch the on this side here. Too big. Come on. No. Wait, you're going to burn it. No, it'll burn out the burn engine. Off. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> warp, <laughs> warp factor four. Okay, Burke's going to um, take it. To take it take it to the engine room. I can't get it out now. It's frozen. It's not going to, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. You broke it. It's not broken. Really? It's supposed to come out like that? Oh, let me dip. Let me dip. Oh. Anyway. Wow. So that was something. I got to tell you on both of these, excellent. But a word of warning, you got to get that thing into the freezer 12 hours ahead of time so it gets cold. What's cool about it is you just then put the ingredients into it. It's cold enough. The spinner turns it. It actually makes a soft serve. It doesn't get to be hard ice cream. Is it, how's the ice cream? Good? Fabulous. It's amazing, you're, isn't you're it? Magician. Oh, it's amazing. All you need, milk, strawberries, a little sugar, a little vanilla. And Can you've I got... stuff in it? Yeah, you get sprinkles, little things. It's not working. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to. So this is the easy way... To do homemade ice wow. cream. Wow. So uh, give us some prices, Leo. How much no was the ice cream? No freaking idea. Maker? Way too much. Oh, okay. I think it's 100. Uh, it's about. A, Let's see here. It is. We, Jason's looking it up. It's about 140 bucks. I'll tell you, the dress was 350 bucks. That was peppermint. Why'd Whoa. They do that? Peppermint sprinkles. That was peppermint sprinkles. Lieutenant Uhuru is unhappy. <laughs> Soft serve. 99.99. No, not bad. 99. It saves okay. the tatas. And okay. the dress, three hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Whoa. So for four hundred fifty dollars, you too could have Captain Janeway serve you soft serve ice cream <laughs> with the waiter. <laughs> That's our waiter, Very Alex Gumpel. <laughs> that is, yeah. You did this in July two thousand seven, and I bought it. It's in my garage. You have another one, and now I have two. <laughs> this one's pink. The other one was not. Now, nice. I'm in very, I'm, I'm especially impressed with the production. It's good you had some tights. I had to get leggings. This is meant for short people. I'm a giant. Well, uh, I, uh, where does the, never mind. <laughs> smile and nod. Oh, <laughs> smile and nod. Thank you, Liz. Hey, enjoy some delicious ice cream from our. Cuisine Art soft serve ice cream maker. <laughs> we can give these away on the game show. <laughs> uh, so what happens to the dress? Are you going to keep it, Liz, or should I wear it? You can fit into it? I could fit into that. 
by, the, by the end of this too. show. You want me? You want to try? No, better not. I don't want to ruin it. Okay, Thank okay. You. Burke has done some good work here. Um, <laughs> he's eating it. It looks like he ate everything. Okay, he's going back to get the uh, stir, and then we're going to uh, actually make some cones. No, we're not going to actually make anything. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay here he comes. <laughs> Burke is so cute. He's been running. He's r running back and forth. There you go. You washed your hands, right, Burke? No, it's all right. It doesn't matter. It's just all among friends here. He's, he's reinserting. I mean, considering that everybody on the staff used the same tip for the uh, alcohol breathalyzer, I, I wouldn't worry. That's about what that. we need now, the breathalyzer. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Good. And now, so you suggest, do you suggest that I pour this in here? <laughs> I can't wait to try this. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. All right. The, uh, put the, some more in there. Mmm. Okay. Wow. Good. Now, now I, this I is suspect. This the kind of thing that you could not got, uh, get at an ice cream store in a cardboard container. What's coming out? It's coming. Oh, you don't live. You left the... Okay, who, who left the handle down? All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. Now let's... Uh, <laughs> Oh! Oh! Listen to that! Wow! All right. Good Is job, it... Burke. Excellent. Let's put a little uh, whip, whipping cream in there. That's like the Rocket Five. It's going now. Whoa! Ooh. <laughs> How about some strawberries? Oh sure. yeah! Sure. These are delicious. Bright red. Just throw those in. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry, wrong sound. That's good. No, I think Doesn't that was appropriate. <laughs> that strawberry had a lot of gas in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Wow. I don't know what I ate for lunch. All right. But. Mm, now would you do this? Here we go. We're going to try the uh, the cone. Okay. Put it under here. Let's see. Uh, you can do it. Oh, you can do it. Get there. On. And there, here we go. A delicious, perfectly farmed wow. ice cream cone <laughs> straight out of the freezer. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's so delicious. And, it all, oh, and remember, it it's, it's all for breast cancer research. Oh, uh, mm. oh wait a minute. I was just chopping. Now you do that. You just yeah. press the lever. Slide that way. Here, just do it for me. So put the cone right there. Oh, it comes out here. Oh, right. Sorry. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. Wow. wow. Now that's something. Look at that. Here, that, would you, that's would authentico you, would you right like there. some dick? Here, just have a whoa, whoa, whoa. have a little bite right right there. Oh, whoa. Wow. You know really... that's oh. It's better than mm. store bought. <laughs> Uh, it sounds wow. better too. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And now, you folks, a bit of grease. You know why we can't get sponsors? On show. <laughs> I don't know. This is mm. this is about as good as it gets. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Mm. That concludes this portion of uh, stuff we found on crap on my mall. Uh, we <laughs> I'm a little drunk on ice cream right now. Um, but no, you know what? it's delicious. It, huh? I think we will be using it. Yeah. I, <laughs> Squeeze it again. I think <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to the beautiful island of Manhattan, the tropical isle situated somewhere in the New York Harbor, for a visit to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. 
They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, oh -ho! he takes them out to play. Oh -ho! It is gadgets warehouse. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> let's go. Okay, our gadget warehouse this week is another viewer's gadget warehouse video. Uh, I'm going to read his letter. We'll watch the video, and then I'll tell you how you can submit uh, a video to the Gizwiz. And the letter goes, hi, Dick and Leo. Here's my submission, my old processor collection. Wow. It's signed George P. B Birdwell, B-U-R-D-E-L-L. -L. And now I should tell you, Leo, it's almost six minutes long, so we can bail out whenever you want. But this man is... Is it, is it too early to stop now? No, it's a little bit too okay. early. Okay. Actually, he has some fascinating processes, and he has cataloged them all. Well, let's just see. Let's just watch. <laughs> it's already video. six minutes. We don't really need the, to introduce that's it. right. All right, here we go. Hi, Dick and Leo from my gadget warehouse. I have something a little bit different. Uh, I like to collect old processors, um, be it ones that served me well or just uh, random ones uh, from times gone by. Uh, before I'll show you some of the rare ones, but before we get into those, just for comparison's sake, for people who may not have seen what a processor looks like, uh, this is a fairly recent generation AMD Opteron, 2.4 gigahertz, and this is a uh, an older Intel Pentium 4 um, before they became 64-bit, uh, and most processors today look this same general form factor. Um, the die itself is about the full socket size. They're all covered up so you can't see anything underneath. Um, and uh, either a whole bunch of tiny little pins under there like you see in these two, and, and today's they're uh, pinless. So for reference as we take a look at some of these, uh, the common ones that uh, people have seen that don't conform to that are probably the old slot-loading Athlons and Pentium 2s. And... Um, if you've never seen what one of those looks like cracked open, it's just an enormous socket for the processor, basically. Um, I'll get into some of the rare stuff now. Um, an Orion, uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, a, a Quantum Effect Devices Orion, 100 megahertz. Uh, this is actually used in uh, in silicon graphics workstations and uh, in Cisco 4000 series routers. Uh, it's 100% ceramic. Um, these are not particularly easy to find, mainly because people who have a whole bunch of Cisco equipment still want them. Um, uh, this this is a process. It's, first off, it's this is heavy. It's a very heavy processor. This is a Compaq Alpha. It is a uh, RISC processor. Um, and if you want to know what that is, watch Security Now with Steve Gibson. Uh, it's made by Deck. 100% uh, ceramic and penless, way ahead of its time, no pins. Uh, this is probably more than a decade old processor and uh, sign of things to come on that one. Um, I also have a few uh, rarish x86 clones. Uh, here's a, uh, a Via C7 Mobile, 400 megahertz, and that it's, <laughs> it's the size of your thumb. It's, it's a tiny, tiny little x86 chip. Um, I also have uh, a Cyrix 180 megahertz chip, uh, back from when people other than just uh, AMD and Intel made processors. And uh, hiding over here for people who may have had a very, very early generation uh, Windows tablet, uh, I have a Transmeta processor, a, uh, a Caruso 1 gigahertz. And if you had an absolutely ancient Windows tablet, a tablet that was preloaded with XP right when XP came out, uh, it, it was probably running this chip uh, to, to help keep the power draw down. Um, and this is also a just very tiny little x86 chip. Uh, Transmeta, you may know them because uh, for the longest time, I don't think it's the case anymore, but for the longest time, Linus Torvalds worked for Transmeta. Um, I also have the... Uh, this one's pretty rare, an Intel Overdrive, uh, 66 megahertz. Um, I think this may be the first and maybe only processor from Intel 
where they had a heat sink from the factory permanently affixed to the die, um, presumably because with an overdrive processor, you just can't handle the power without a cooler. Um, I think that's, that's what's all in of, your uh, again, 66 megahertz. Uh, this is probably my rarest one, a next-gen NX586. You'll see IBM stamped underneath the die. Um, this is 87 megahertz, and uh, what's significant about this the people who designed this chip uh, went on at AMD to become the K7 team, uh, who and the K7 is basically the Athlon 64. So the people who designed this became the team at AMD that did the only x86 processor to ever kick Intel's butt, pretty much. Um, I also have an absolutely enormous... Intel Pentium Pro, 180 megahertz. Oh, this, it's one. like the size of your palm. It's yeah. an enormous processor. Predecessor the amount Xeon. of gold that's probably in here is uh, probably the thing is, substantial. Leo, would he have um, taken these all out of computers? Enormous. Well, I don't think he owned all of these, but most of these are computer processors except for a few. And for the, uh, the because when you buy the just a processor a, alone, uh, isn't it like almost the price of the computer? Smart, well, there's hundreds of dollars, it's yeah. Kind of like yeah. He probably took these out of computers, yeah. Big, enormous, slot-loaded uh, processor. The funny thing and, is, we uh, I mean, I've been doing this so long, I've talked about almost all these processors, except for that ceramic one. That was unique. A quantum Motorola processor. 400 megahertz power PC. This is uh, from the G4 series. Um, and I'm sure if you're an Apple fan, you're glad these are no longer inside your computer because <laughs> they just can't they just can't hold up to an x86 processor so uh there you go there's a look into my warehouse that is a with very cool collection actually. ancient processors yeah, i know it's, it, i, I know. was prepared to go to sleep and actually probably not as interesting to the people watching no fun love the show keep it up wow no i wow. uh the same <clears throat> because i'm not big into processes i i really know it's in anything but i, I first of all i was so impressed that is everything written down on all these plastic envelopes and then that was fascinating to see that processor that had all that gold that it needed yeah to, yeah uh, amazing the, the, those uh, anyway, old penny and pro chips they were the they were the workstation chips like the zeons today yeah yeah uh, so yeah. he signed it, George P. Birdwell, and then he there was a little P.S. that he would be impressed if Dick D. Bartolo could explain why he used that name, because his real name is Jeremy Sands. So Jeremy, Jeremy said, Dick, if you don't know the name George P. Birdwell, familiar. is it an old you know, radio name? You know what, Leo? It sounded familiar to me too. And he said, go to Wikipedia and you'll see why. Why, Dick, you should know it. So on Wikipedia, it says George P. Bradwell, for 10 years, was on the board of directors of Mad Magazine. Oh, well, but he Mad wasn't Magazine, a real person. No, there is no board of directors. <laughs> and, and so I looked through many issues in the 10-year period just to see if, as a goof, Bill had put him on the masthead. It's nowhere there. I, I called Nick Meglin, the previous co-editor of Mad, who was working at MAD during those 10 years. And Nick said, Dick, it's something that someone put on Wikipedia that no one bothered checking. It's a made, made up. Uh, now, see, here's an interesting, if you go to George P. Burdell. Yes. That's him, right? Yeah. If a, a fictitious student officially rolled, enrolled in Georgia Tech in 1927 as a practical joke... He's received all the undergraduate degrees offered by Georgia Tech, served in the military. But the whole thing is made up, including the board of directors, because as you know, there never was a board of directors. Oh, I see. Okay. And they, the, the, the store in Georgia Tech's student center is called Burdell's. So if you, oh, okay. if you well, went I, to Georgia thought, Tech, I, you'd know about him. Yeah. No, I, I thought even though it was a fake name that it would have been in Mad because Bill would have thought that was funny, but... I think we, it does we, sound like the kind of name he'd make up, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, very interesting story, but I don't think he actually... Well, now, it says he was listed on Mad Magazine's board of directors from 1969 to 1982, but this is from an article in The Technique, um, which is the Georgia Tech 
a student oh. publication. So maybe they made that up. <laughs> I think they, <laughs> well, considering it's not in there and two people. You would know. Never, we would know. But I'm guessing that uh, that our correspondent, Jason, actually went to Georgia Tech, would be my guess. He's a rambling uh, wreck. Well, well, Jerry, yeah. Or Jerry. Jerry, Jeremy. Jeremy. Uh, so, yeah. Jeremy, uh, thank you for your video. If you have a video, we like him a little shorter than that, two to three minutes. Yeah, but he had um, lots to say. He did. Um <laughs> More so than your, most. Video, <laughs> your video can be My Gadget Warehouse, a gadget like George, uh, like Jeremy, uh, or like a lot of people who can throw stuff out. Uh, just show us the uh, gadget, why you bought it, why you can't uh, bear to part with it. My favorite gadget of all time, little two to three minute video on that. I bought a piece of crap. If you bought something and hated, uh, your little critique of that. Or finally, I invented this. If indeed you or someone close to you invented something and um, post it on YouTube, send Jason the link at gizwiz at twit.tv. Yes, sir. And hopefully you'll see it here. You will indeed, along with every few years, this fine soft serve ice cream maker. <laughs> yeah, Leo, Leo will, as soon as Leo forgets about it, I'll suggest it again. I know. I can see right in my garage where that box still sits with the once used soft serve ice cream maker. I should bring it back and then we could have regular, we could have like soft serve parties. We could have a oh, soft yeah. serve off. Soft serve off. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. A competition. Yeah. 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 Mr. D. Bartolo is at gizwiz.biz. That's a chance for you to win an autograph copy. Letter? What? Want to do a letter? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do a letter. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was, I was self-serving self myself. <laughs> and now a and letter. And our letter is from John Garbles, Garbies, G-A-R-B-E-S. The subject is put the runcible spoon away. Uh, I don't know if anyone has posted this, has pointed this out. But the spork is not actually the original name for the spoon with tines. It was are the runcible shocked? spoon? Yes. Are you as shocked and amazed as I am? Wasn't that Ed the one where the, um, the cow jumped over the moon? No, the no, no. The children's verse? No. no? Or, or, was Alice no, in Wonderland? Earlier. Edward Lear used the Edward name. Edward Lear. Edward Lear. Re, uh, Resunso, run, 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 <laughs> run, run, spoon. Yeah. In the children's story, Owl and the Pussycat. Owl and the Pussycat. In 1871. So but how I do we know it, that that's a spork? Um, well, because it was a spoon with tines. Isn't that what a spork is? According to Merriam-Webster, it's a sharp-edged fork with three broad, curved prongs. Or right or tines, right? It sounds a little bit like a spork. Here is a um, website, a straight dope classic from Cecil's Storehouse of Human Knowledge. What is runcible spoon? It's a utensil suitable for runciation. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it was owned by an owl and a pussycat. They ate with a runcible spoon. They dined on mince and slices All of right, quince. So it's but he never book? said what it was. Oh, he called it that. Oh, I see. But we don't know what it is. No, we don't. We don't. Well, then, um, so John said, well, we're going to go back and change every show where we ever refer to it. But, well, I guess not, John, because we have no proof. We have no idea. That, exactly. Um, anyway, John, Cedar Rapids, Iowa Thank you for telling us. It says in Merriam-Webster, it was coined with an obscure meaning by Edward Lear. Oh. oh. A chance to steal it and put it on Kickstarter and make a million dollars. Well, Dick, now is it time for me to tell people about the What the Heck is a Contest? Yes, yes, and the picture uh, went up today of what the June cover is, so you'll know what you're playing to win. 
Getting there. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. So go to gizwiz.biz. There we click go. Click the What the Heck Is It contest banner. And there it uh, is. Oh. Scroll down. Scroll down and you'll see what you're doing. Ah, the there we go. Thrones. Wow. Alfred's sitting on the <laughs> the Iron <laughs> on the Throne. throne. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> and he looks kind of like Ned Stark. Wow. So that's what you will win. And what did you write in this week, this month's edition? Oh, uh, Leo, it's very funny. We, uh, I wrote a one-page ad, a takeoff on a garment that you and I are both very familiar with. So we'll see if the man who makes them has a good sense of humor. Oh, he's not known for his sense of humor. Well, he better... <laughs> Uh, assuming he's not watching, it's a one-page ad for the stuffy vest. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. It's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty good. No, he'll love it. You know what? Scott yeah. will love I, it. I, I think he will, too. Yeah. So we're going uh, to give you a chance to win that. Autographed by the author of the stuffy vest, Mr. Dick D. Bartolo. Go to the GizWiz site, gizwiz.biz. Visit the What the Heck is a Contest. Figure out what that is. And then whatever you do, don't say, make something else up. See, I would be tempted to say it's a Smurf towel rack. But no, I'm going to say something else, clever and creative, so I can win an autographed copy. There are 12 Mad Magazines for the right answer, but 24 for the clever wrong answer. Gizwiz.biz. Yes. Dickie D, I need a nap after all that ice cream. <laughs> you know, I don't want to break this to you, but you could actually buy completed ice cream like <laughs> in a tub. I know. Have you ever seen it, Leo? It comes in a tub about this big, nice brown wrapper. You could, yeah, something like this. Some a little like dryers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it but would this be stuff, nice to It's just nothing it else in it. Just cane sugar, vitamin D milk. Vanilla, strawberries, and cream. That's, I mean, how simple can you get? Oh, yeah, that is, that's amazing. That's pretty pure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that ingredient, add a quart of Dyer's ice cream <laughs> for this flavor. Is the key. <laughs> for flavor. <laughs> Nick, thank you so much. We'll see you next time right here on the same station, all right? I'll be here.